It's been nearly three weeks since I've posted a video on YouTube because I was on vacation, but we are officially back. And today I will be talking about some of the most important U1 head coaches heading into the 2024 college football season. There was a bunch of interesting hires this offseason, but the biggest shocker of this offseason had to be Nick Saban retiring and Kalen DeBoer taking over Alabama as the new head coach. There are a bunch of questions about how a Kalen DeBoer led Alabama team is going to find success. Kalen DeBoer has to fill some big shoes replacing the legendary Nick Saban. But there's not that many head coaches in college football that have a similar resume to Kalen DeBoer. Kalen DeBoer has had a great amount of success everywhere he has coached. And he has an incredible coaching record of 104-12 and in his career. He has been working his way up for years. And he definitely proved that he is one of the top coaches in college football last season when he led a Washington team with three and four stars to a national championship appearance. He is known for his incredible offense of mind, and I have no doubt that he will keep Alabama's offense playing at a high level in the SEC. And a quarterback like Jalen Milrow has potential to take massive strides with the leadership of Kalen DeBoer. There's still some unknowns with Kalen DeBoer. He still has to prove he can recruit at a high level in the SEC, and it's going to be a lot different of a landscape in the SEC for Kalen DeBoer. And we know if Alabama wants to achieve their full potential with Kalen DeBoer at head coach, we will probably need to see a lot of positives come from the defensive side of the ball. Because 99% of the time, defense wins championships, and the past national title winners can prove that. I'm definitely excited to see what Kalen DeBoer can accomplish at Alabama, and we definitely should not underestimate this team. Another very important U1 head coach has to be Sharon Moore. Sharon Moore is the new head coach for the Michigan Wolverines and he will definitely have a lot of pressure on him to carry over the momentum from last season. Last season, Michigan won it all, but Michigan ranks near the bottom of the country for return in production, and Sharon Moore is going to have a difficult task on his hands trying to figure it out on the offensive side of the ball. And it all starts at the quarterback position, who is going to step up and become the leader of this offense. We know Michigan is going to have a dominant Russian attack, and they arguably have the best tight end in the country returning. The defense is likely going to be a top 10 defense and possibly even a top 5 or top 3 defense. But just imagine if they can figure it out at the quarterback position. And if they do figure it out at the quarterback position, then this should definitely be a national title contender moving forward. And I think it's ultimately going to come down to skill position players and most importantly quarterback play. And similar to Alabama, Michigan has some unknowns, but they can be a scary team if they put it all together. And let's not ignore the fact that both of these teams just made the playoffs last season. So I really think you can't count out Michigan. Because this is a team that just won a national championship last season. And Sharon Moore had time to learn in this Michigan coaching staff the past few seasons. So we might just be ready to step up and take over the head coaching role. The next coach on my list is Mike Elko for Texas A&M. This is a very interesting hire in my opinion. Because Mike Elko did more with less at Duke. But it's going to be a lot different coaching in SEC school than it was coaching Duke. Texas A&M has been a team that has had the talent to compete at a high level. But they haven't necessarily used that talent to the highest potential. They had the number one class of 2022. And they have also had a lot of other great recruiting classes. But we found out quick that Jimbo Fisher was a fraud and couldn't execute with the incredible talent on that team. And outside of that 9-1 2020 season, Texas A&M hasn't been that great of a team recently. They also haven't won double-digit games since 2010, and that was when they had Johnny Manziel. So it will be interesting to see how Mike Elko uses his resources, and it will be interesting to see how well he recruits in the SEC, but I definitely think Mike Elko was a solid hire for Texas A&M. He wasn't the best hire of the offseason, but he might be an underrated hire because he might honestly be what Texas A&M needs at head coach. The next head coach and hire that I want to talk about is Jed Fish for the Washington Huskies. Jed Fish was recently the Arizona head coach and he created a lot of controversy after leaving Arizona. And it honestly seemed like Jed Fish was just getting started at Arizona after Arizona won 10 games and won the Alamo Bowl. But he got a big contract offer from Washington and he just couldn't pass it up. Jed Fish is definitely going to have a tough task on his hands because Washington lost every single starter on the offensive side of the ball. And Washington will be playing their first season in the Big Ten next season. Washington is going to take a step down. I think most of us are aware of that. But I think Jed Fish has potential to do great things at Washington if he stays there a bit longer. Because Washington has some of the tools necessary to be a solid team next season. 
And they should definitely be a pretty tough team at the line of scrimmage. And they have a veteran quarterback who is Will Rogers. So Washington could be a team flying under the radar. The next hire I want to talk about is the former San Jose State head coach Brent Brennan, who became the new Arizona head coach. We just talked about Jed Fish, who was the former Arizona head coach, but Brent Brennan is going to be an interesting head coach for Arizona. Brent Brennan may not have been the big hire that Arizona was looking for. Brennan doesn't have a great head coaching record, but he actually did a pretty good job at San Jose State if you look at how bad San Jose State was before Brent Brennan. He led San Jose State to three bowl game appearances in four years, and before that, they had only made three bowl games in the previous 28 years. Brent Brennan was also a graduate assistant for Arizona back in 2000, so he knows the area very well, and he has been working his way up in the West Coast for a long time. Brent Brennan is going to have some incredible talent on this Arizona roster to work with. They returned Fafita and McMillan, and they are possibly the best quarterback receiver duo in all of college football. Don't count out Arizona because in my eyes, this is still a team very capable of winning the Big 12 moving forward despite what they lost. They return a lot of talent, including eight starters on defense, and they might just have the best secondary in the Big 12. And I think this is still going to be a very good team on both sides of the ball. And Brent Brennan was definitely an interesting hire. The next hire I want to talk about is Manny Diaz to Duke. Manny Diaz is back in the ACC after two seasons as the Penn State defensive coordinator. Manny Diaz is a defensive-minded guy just like the former Duke head coach Mike Elko. Manny Diaz has a lot of experience in the ACC, coaching six years at Miami and also six years at NC State. He ultimately does not have a great track record, but he does have a big experience advantage, and I do think he is embracing this challenge, and he knows the area very well. Manny Diaz wasn't a big hire, but I definitely wanted to give this hire some attention because Duke football hasn't been relevant in quite a while. But they have a pretty solid defense, and Malik Murphy is a high upside quarterback. Duke should definitely be a solid team in the ACC. But I'm interested to see if Manny Diaz can keep building up this Duke program in football. The next hire I want to talk about is Jonathan Smith to Michigan State. And I do think this is going to be one of the most impactful hires of this offseason. Jonathan Smith really did a great job at Oregon State. And he's already making an impact at Michigan State with the talent he has brought in from the portal. Ultimately, I know they lost a lot. But he also brought in multiple productive players from that Oregon State roster, including four-star quarterback Aiden Childs. And Aiden Childs actually has a very bright future. It's not going to be easy to rebuild Michigan State in a stacked Big Ten conference, but Michigan State isn't always a terrible team. And he does have some resources to work with at Michigan State, and I would not be surprised if he turned them around quicker than most people would expect him to. And I do think Jonathan Smith is one of the more underrated head coaches in college football, and I think his track record at Oregon State should prove that. So I think there are definitely reasons to be optimistic about Michigan State football moving forward. The next coaching hire I wanted to talk about was Jeff Lebby to Mississippi State. And last year, Mississippi State had an offense that really struggled. But Jeff Lebby has potential to turn it around. He put up incredible offensive numbers at UCF, Ole Miss, and Oklahoma as the offensive coordinator. But now he enters the SEC for his first head coaching job. He's also had coordinator jobs in the SEC before, so he does have some experience in the SEC. It's not going to be easy to rebuild Mississippi State in the SEC, but he already added Baylor quarterback Blake Shapin to run the offense, and Lebby is confident that he can get the job done at Mississippi State. The next coach I want to talk about is Fran Brown for Syracuse, and Fran Brown was actually the defensive backs coach for Georgia the past two seasons, and he did a pretty excellent job over there. This was definitely an interesting hire for Syracuse. Instead of picking up a coach from the group of five level, they ended up going with a guy like Fran Brown, and this is going to be a big role for Fran Brown. But he's already making an impact at Syracuse by bringing in multiple defensive additions, including four-star edge rusher for Deal Diggs. And on the offensive side of the ball, they picked up former Ohio State quarterback Kyle McCord. Syracuse is definitely an ACC sleeper, and they have some of the tools necessary to be successful. They return a lot of the talent from last season, and next season is definitely going to be a new era of football for Syracuse. And the last coaching hire I am going to talk about for this video is Bill O'Brien to Boston College. There was a lot of controversy after Bill O'Brien surprisingly took over the offensive coordinator job at Ohio State, but ever since then things have changed, and he is no longer in that spot. And instead, Bill O'Brien became the new head coach for Boston College, and he is familiar with that area. And I don't think Boston College could have got a much better hire. Bill O'Brien has experience at the NFL level. 
A lot of people believe he is a bad coach, but Boston College will not be asking much from him, and I'm interested to see how Bill O'Brien does coaching a below-average Boston College team. But Boston College did make a bowl game last season, and they also have a solid quarterback, so you could argue that they are on the rise. So I don't think the situation is that bad for Bill O'Brien at Boston College in year one. I still have my questions about what this team will be, but I wouldn't be surprised if they made a bowl game again. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's video. It is great to be back and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave your video ideas down in the comments below. But let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football then you will love this channel. Because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing. And also consider joining my discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it guys and peace out.